Every business has its own story. That story starts with the heart, soul, blood, sweat, and tears of the entrepreneurs and those who support them. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, and I've devoted my adult life to helping others realize their dreams of owning and growing a business. I'm constantly inspired by those who put it all on the line to build their dreams. I'm compelled to tell you these stories. This is about the people who are giving it all to help better the world around us. This is Constant Purpose, small businesses changing the world. Today, we're visiting Bayou Terrebonne Distillers, one of the few distilleries in Louisiana. You'd think there would be more distilleries in a place almost synonymous with partying, but this place is unique. For this founder, Noah, his business is a tapestry of both his family's past, but it also weaves together the story of people who are changing an entire region. Noah, thank you for taking some time to meet with us. How did you get into the crazy world of distilling alcohol and forming your company here? So uh, it all starts with my great-grandmother. Uh, she was a moonshiner on Bayou Terrebonne, which is why we're called Bayou Terrebonne Distillers. Yeah. She was also our town's first Mardi Gras queen, so she was a queen and an outlaw. That makes sense. And, uh, <laughs> the Cajun term for being very mis mischievous, she was Kanai, right? So we heard a ton of stories about her, kind of like a lot of folklore with her, and yeah. with her in inside our family. And we even had her still in my Pomerantz house, uh, just kind of like a talking piece. We use this still, I mean, we got a lot of knowledge out of this thing. Yeah. We did, you know, distillation with this still for, you know, close to a decade. Wow. Just messing okay. around until we wore the bottom out of it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, she's a good still. I mean, she has some sort of magic in it too. I don't know if it's great grandma Lily or what, but yeah. it makes some damn fine whiskey. That's awesome. And then uh, we actually modeled our current stills after this one, like a simple pot copper okay. still. It all started with a, trying to preserve a family tradition. It's just a way for my cousins and my uncles and my family to do something cool together and tell old stories. Right? Yeah. But the purpose is to preserve a illicit family tradition. We have a genuine story. We have a genuine purpose. Mm -hmm. Just the conduit is, is alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said it. You definitely have those days where it's hard. And it's, it, it, I think you have a lot of times more stress but there's, there's also this just love for it. It's kind of like, it keeps you going. It's part of your life. It's not like a separate thing. It seems like that's that's been the case for a while. That's a good way to put it, man. It's, it's a part of you, right? Yeah. Especially, it's really cool whenever you can start a business that, that's tied to something that's really important to you, right? Yeah. And I guess you can figure out, you know, whatever the business is tying it to something important, but this one is pretty obvious for us. Like why it's important to us, it's, you know, family tradition. So, yeah, man, I mean, when things get tough, you know, it's, it's easy to fall back on. So yeah. I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's amazing you can build up this business from a history of something like bootlegging. The world is always changing and we can't predict the future. We can only follow our passions and hope it lays the groundwork for something better. So, you know, this is a place that you came. South Louisiana was a place to, you know, live on the edge and, and really make your own rules. So yeah. it's definitely ingrained in our DNA and definitely probably a reason why we have more moonshiners per capita than most places I was saying. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I mean, I'm, that's an assumption on yeah. my point. I think, <laughs> I think, I mean, we know we're kind of lawless you know, right, down right. here. And I would assume that you know, everybody that I know knows somebody that was a moonshiner if okay. they had a phone back in the day, so. Interesting. Yeah, that that is the way around here. Well, this is contraband, and I see that you have, you know, the silhouette of Grandma Lou is still here. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Should we try this? You yeah, let's try some. You know, this comes out of the still like this, right? We cut it down to 90 proof. Mm -hmm. the, the rest of it will actually barrel for bourbon, right? So she'll be smelling and tasting or like, kind of like fruity floral notes, and actually maybe even like, a note of butter, like buttered popcorn. That's very cool. But it should be a very light and just kind of a pleasant alcohol to drink. Yeah, oh. like a really clean floral yeah. smell. It all depends yeah. on your substrate. And so what's the floral here come from? Is it just the corn or is there something else that... It's just the corn. That's yeah. what kind of fascinates me is that you would never expect something made from corn would smell yeah. like this, right? I mean, you just go in there. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, very, very clean, like super, right. you know, not not much herb or anything. It's just, it's just like kind of a, a yeah. neutral, easy spirit to drink. It mixes well. I mean, we make a ton of different drinks with it, the uh, cocktails here. And the natural progression from here is is good earth, our, our bourbon. And, you know, that's something that we're very, very proud of because I've mentioned before, 
It's the first bourbon in the state made with Louisiana corn. I, I knew that you sourced the corn here, but, but do you mill it on site too? Or do you, does another local come here, somebody help with that? Or No, we mill it here on site. That's awesome. So we handle everything. I mean, from the grain to the bottle, yeah. it's processed here. This is the Gulf Coast bourbon. Mm -hmm. This is, is this, would you say this is your main? All right, this is my yep. pride drawer. Okay. Uh, this is what we wanted to make from the get go. You know, corn whiskey is, we love our corn whiskey. And when we got started, we wanted to make bourbon, but you know, you gotta let your bourbon age. So you gotta yeah. figure out to do something in the meantime. Mm -hmm. We figured, you know, we'll make corn whiskey yeah. and sell that as a means to make some income while our bourbon was aging. Okay. Uh, so, but this was always the goal to get to. Right? Awesome. Wow, it smells amazing. I bet this is good with like chocolate. This seems like a go. So it goes good with chocolate, it goes good with red meat, ice cream, whatever. Awesome. All right, well, cheers. Cheers this to is you. Great. My confession is that I, I have I have at least a, uh, one or two bottles of this at home. If I'm, if I'm going out, dragging them definitely before and when I get home, having a well, good, man. Yeah, yeah, so. That makes me feel good. I drink it too. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. What's this third bottle in the center here? So that's hard scrabble. That's our rum. The idea for us was when we decided to stop being a one trick pony and make something else, mm -hmm. the clearest option was to make rum. We thought, you know, it'd be really cool to age some rum in our used bourbon barrels. Very. So once we had a, a pretty good inventory of empty bourbon barrels, mm -hmm. we were like, all right, let's go ahead and start making rum. And we follow the same pattern as we did with our whiskey. So. Well, it's a beautiful bottle. I mean, it's incredible. It's got gold foil embossed label and everything. It's 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 a beautiful bottle. I'm sure, I'm sure it's gonna taste good too. We're actually gonna be revamping all of our labels to kind of fit the same style. Well, was, I'd love to try the rum, yeah, and then. Yeah. So this is 84 proof. Uh, this is kind of called a Jamaican pot style rum. You know, you're gonna actually taste a little bit of the molasses, the character of the molasses in it too. Okay. But the vanilla note, like you said, yeah. that's that's what you should be smelling. Okay. And then uh, almost like maybe a banana. Oh yeah, banana, that's the yeah. other way. All right, well great, Cheers. down that. Oh wow, that's incredible actually. That's, you know, with a lot of rums, yeah, there's like this kind of really interesting, almost more minerally taste to it or something or, or you know and then it gets really sweet mm -hmm. that finishes in a totally unexpected way that's pretty great i think we got very lucky with it too i mean i like i'm with you i don't drink a lot of rum and i didn't really know what to expect and i don't man look we, we might be just a little bit lucky here because we yeah. make we make good bourbon i think a lot of it has to do with the climate and the atmosphere and just what's grown here yeah and i think a lot of the the good taste comes from just the local stuff here so very cool what's what's the story behind this one so this is the only spirit that i did not make la one was the first whiskey <clears> made <throat> in louisiana <throat> since prohibition it was made by donner and pelche and thibodeau they made whiskey they made uh, rum gin vodka but their their claim to fame was being the first legal whiskey in a long, long time in the state. As luck would have it, we opened up our distillery right when they were closing down. Mm -hmm. And they had a ton of these whiskey barrels in there, which was a problem for them because they couldn't legally take possession of that building until that whiskey was either transferred to a bonded pr premises like ours. Oh, wow or destroyed and witnessed by a federal agent. Wow, that's crazy. So, I never would have guessed that, 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 yeah. is that there are so many legal requirements just for wooden barrels. Yeah, I mean, th nuts. think about like the, uh, the old the old prohibition days when they had like bust them up, that's yeah. what they would have had to do in like in lieu of transferring to a bond wow. premises. So you guys stepped in, you said, we're starting an operation. Those are things we need anyway. They contacted us, man. Okay. I mean, we drove there on a Friday night with a couple of trailer loads and bootleg that stuff back down to Homa. Yeah. And great grandma would have been proud. Dude, that is a great story. And that's, that's an example of, of that do yourself entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, should we, should we taste that? You want to yep. compare it to what, what you're doing with uh, yeah, you're, the you're good gonna, earth? You're not going to taste any similarities you okay. know, with our whiskey. You know, this is definitely a standalone product. You know, it, it's a very unique whiskey. Okay. Super, super kind of like eclectic kind of blend, but it's a super good whiskey. Yeah. Well, it makes it excellent old fashioned too. Sure, sure, sure. Oh yeah, definitely different. Definitely has that more more of a whiskey taste, a lot less sweet. It just tastes more like an Irish or Scotch whiskey yeah. though than a than a bird. One of the big, you know, stigmas about whiskey is the age, right? Right. Older the better is is kind of the consensus. Would you say that now this was aged for four years, mm -hmm. a little bit over. This was aged for a year and a half. Not the knock LA one or any yeah. spirit, but 
you know, I like to kind of point out to, to people like, look, don't get, don't throw away a lot of money on, you know, a 20 year bourbon compared to like a five or a 10. Yeah. Uh, the difference just really isn't, I mean, the, it all depends on what goes in the barrel at the end of the day. It's all about how you like it. Yeah. You know, we used to not sell Coke here. Yeah. Uh, like I wouldn't make whiskey and coke. You're like, you're not mixing my stuff with coke. Man. <laughs> but I quickly realized that's bad for business. Yeah. You let people drink it however they want, man. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about how it tastes in you. Yeah. And that's the beauty about the liquor business too, is that, you know, it, it's quite subjective and yeah. uh, that can be a good thing or a bad thing, but it always keeps it interesting. Man, this was super uh, fun and interesting. You know, I always ask this question of people, you know, how do you deal with the ups and downs of being a business owner in general? Man, I'm still trying to figure that out too. Yeah. To be honest. I mean, we're a young business. Uh, we opened up 2020, February 2020, right before COVID closure started. So mm -hmm. we were kind of like born in the fire. Yeah. We figured out, you know, a way to make money by, you know, making hand sanitizer. Okay. When we couldn't, when we couldn't be open to the public. And then we, you know, we, we had to deal with COVID closure for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so I'm constantly in, in a state of survival. Yeah. It kind of seems like my mindset. And, uh, I guess the best way I deal with that yeah. is to look at look at like historically how we've done. You know, look at and just kind of see that. Look, this is just the way you feel right now. This isn't true, right? Yeah. Uh, because you can feel. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's the same with you, but sometimes I feel like the walls are on fire when they're not. Yeah. You know? And certainly, man. And the best way I know to deal with that is to just kind of look back and kind of reflect. Where was I? Where was BTD? a year ago right yeah. now. Are we better than we were? All right, we're progressing. Yeah. And just keeping, keep them, I, I'm, I'm a big list guy. Mm -hmm. I'm all about the list. So as long as I can keep scratching things on my list, yep. I feel good. Uh, yeah, for me, it's the same thing. It's just remembering that the normal state is that it's changing and it's going up and down. And that's no reason to freak out. That's the reason to stay calm and be organized and embracing. Yeah. You're kind of going with the flow here. Um, with a direction in mind, you know? Yeah, you can't control everything down from that ass. You know what I mean? And that, that's part of being self-employed is that you don't get the the nice, good, warm feeling of having a steady paycheck and steady, you know, yeah. just a steady direction. I mean, it's, it's, it's similar to like navigating a boat in, in waters you don't know that well. You got to sort of get a scan of the horizon and all the different obstacles and challenges you might have. Be calm when things hit the bottom that you're not sure what they are. And then when you get a little bit lost, don't freak out and panic. You gotta figure out a way to get back and think about where you've you've come. But that's a close analogy I always have too, and I, I try to once or twice. I never at least. thought about it that way, but <laughs> I like that a lot and I'm gonna remind yeah. myself of that later. Yeah. For sure. Well cool man. Well let's take a little yep. tour and, and see see the all the magic and, and the steps in the process. Absolutely. If you don't mind. What's cool about our distillery and distillation in Louisiana in general is that there's not a lot. What that translates to is there's a lot of opportunities to be the first at something. Mm -hmm. um, for us, we're the first and the only currently bourbon made with Louisiana corn. And that's, that's something true. that we're really, really proud of. We're certified by the state. The only whiskey grain that grows in Louisiana is corn. Yeah. Lucky for us and for everybody else, corn makes some damn fine whiskey. So first of all, this this is a great spot. It looks like you know, you're set up for private parties, big events, and I assume that's that's part of the plan, but this is a beautiful space. This was built in 1921. It was a dry shrimp packing plant, and we have a really cool old story, and we wanted a cool building to match our story. I was, you know, drastically limited the building that we could choose from. This was a, just a really lucky, you know, just circumstance, yeah. and I just came knocking for the right time, and I plugged up for about like six months. I come visit them every week. They eventually decide, well, you know what, we'll, we'll trust you to take care of this place. If you look around, a lot of stuff on the wall is, is there. That's cool. Was, I said all that to say that this building's high sand. Yeah, it's pretty neat, yeah. right? You're not going to see too many buildings after 1930 made out of cypress around right here. So I'm going to make a place for making wood. But also for private events. We had a private event last night. We're also be barreling some whiskey today. Okay. Uh, which is gonna be fun. That's great. So what's this is a tote, right? What's in this what's in the tote? So this is raw whiskey in there. Uh, okay, now it's 117 uh, well, with the So this is a plate filter. I actually got this from down in Bunch of the Stellars. Uh, okay. uh, with 50 micron filters. And then the little passing pump filter and then we'll 
the way. Which is super crucial in this particular business because everything has to be accounted for because taxes, right? This is pretty cool because this was left over. The previous owners oh. are going, so they oh, used to cool. ship dried shrimp out in barrels. Oh, awesome. That's pretty neat. So they had like these old stuff makers. That's like, super cool. Let me show you that. Better when you punch through the... Just, uh, just like a piece of paper or like cardboard, right? And then you just kind of travel it along and then get your letters, right? So this was left awesome. by the previous owners of the building. And they used to ship dried shrimp out in barrels. It's yeah. like we ship our whiskey or store our whiskey. That's very cool. It all needs a little bit of oil. We make all the vessels with it. And uh, as you can see back here, you're saying these barrels stenciled by hand yeah. using that 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 uh, old stencil machine. You can yeah. see it. That's beautiful writing. Oh, you're still using the original stenciling from here. That, I was wondering if they sold that somewhere. That, that came that came with the building. That came with the building. Yeah, that's you can't crazy. buy that anywhere, man. That's probably like toxic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Probably right. By a straight melt of the letter or something. Prepare our container. We'll take our uh, little hand me down yeah. brush that we got. That is super cool. And you got a, like, there's a trick to it, right? You don't want too much ink on it. Right. It'll just like smudge. How many tries did it take you to figure that out? A lot. <laughs> a lot. So, anyway, this is our, our bourbon stencil with our, uh, our distillery ID on it. We're Technically the 28th distillery in the state. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Put it on there. And it real nice. Yeah, I, I know that I would immediately put too much ink on it. Very slow. Yeah. What I'm seeing in the You don't like there's not enough. So do it. Oh, that's pretty amazing. It comes out pretty good. I, it would be, there would be a puddle of ink this high. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this, so you're weighing it before. You get your care weight, that way, when you weigh the gross weight, you figure out how much the actual alcohol weighs. Okay. I mean, that's probably what a lot of people that enjoy drinking whiskey probably don't think about. I mean, this is more like science. Everything has to be so precise to get it right and make sure the business function and that. It takes a lot of other skills that we can just do appreciation. I'm glad you think down on this barrel, but I'm not going to get 10 down on that. I'm going to lose over four barrels of alcohol, about 18.20% of the time. I'm going to your barrel will lose 50% of the time. What do you do to recoup some of that loss? That's like money evaporating out. That's a part of business. Like, how do we not figure out if it's because it's in a barrel? Right. At least. We need to figure something out. So I just got to plug the hose in. We'll fill it up and I'll I'll let you. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool, man. We'll roll it on down the line. Well, all right. Cool about this work too, man. Uh, the Vegas kind of work. Yeah. You have a strong skill set down here. It applies to pretty much one industry right now, but it's very transferable. Yeah. And that should be that should give a lot of optimism to you know people here, but also people from around the country that can see the value in you know the, the labor force down here and just the environment. Yeah. A lot of this starts here, and the most skilled people doing this. Little past. This is raw whiskey that's in this tank, this tote tank through our plate filter and then into the barrel. Part of the process of making bourbon is uh, saying goodbye to it. Yeah. To a couple of years. That's right. You know, the alcohol is so antiquated, but you know, you can still be home for stealing cows and horses in Louisiana. Oh, really? By the Louisiana law. <laughs> it's kind of how like the alcohol law seems. There were so many distillery for prohibition, and then, you know, that wiped out so many. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this shit. You can't help but notice how many of these kinds of companies there were for a long period of time. You often ask yourself, what happened? The so 1.4 million four. Oh wow, look at that. It's like literally on the dime. <laughs> Some of our first rodeo. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Here is where Noah invites me to bang in the seal to close up the barrel. I guess you'd say this bourbon barrel is about to get hammered. And that's definitely a change for me. I feel like I'm, I'm going to mess this up somehow. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just super hard or just? Not as hard as you think, man. Just go ahead. Give okay. it about three good strokes. All right. What's your 
I really want to pull it. That's it. It looks off. As I was doing this, I felt like I was going to break the barrel full of Noah's hard work, so I approached this without much force. The drinks were definitely easier than me taking a swipe of the seat. Yeah, now I did comfortable. I just didn't want to break so break on. <laughs> and the major. That looks a lot more Oh, wow. Look at that. It's gone, man. Yeah. One of the great things about companies like Bayou Terrebonne Distillers is that they're showing that places like South Louisiana can take the skills that it's learned from legacy industries and do something else with them entirely to create jobs in the future. Many of the same steps that one might use to refine chemicals or treat tanks full of liquid are actually used in the process of making liquor or other liquid products. This is where we cook down the corn to make the whiskey. Okay. And the actual right here. This is a, this is a oh, mash. You can kind of see like a sheen on those bubbles, right? I mean, it's sweet. Oh, you can taste it. Yeah, it tastes good. Oh uh, yeah, it's like sugar, right? Yeah. Now, <laughs> corn, but it's, corn doesn't naturally have sugar present. Right. The biggest obstacle in making whiskey is to run starch just the sugar. So what we do is we throw a bunch of milk corn in that pot, cook it down so it's nice and soft, and then add some malted barley to it. This is probably half the battle in making whiskey is just converting starch to sugar. Yeah. See how it's kind of like rolling, especially in that one right there. I see he's actually doing his job. There's so much like handmade feel here. You're like, no, I love this stuff. This is like part of who I am. And I think that's more meaningful a lot of times than somebody who's like, I put together a plan and I raised a bunch of money and now I mean, I'm dude, like, I don't know if I'd be able to start a business without what didn't have like a passion. I think of this as like my lifeblood. Like if I didn't have this, I would I would be a different person. I wouldn't know. I don't know what I'd be doing. I, said, Man, I don't know much dude, but I know I'll turn corn to cash. <laughs> I mean, look, Whitey Terrebonne Distillers is the first legal distiller in Terrebonne Parish. We take a lot of pride in that. I feel like I'm just excited to be in a position to hopefully grow this business in a very authentic, organic way. Yeah. Um, and we urge anybody to come check us out in Desert Woods. Uh, it's me and my two cousins that run this place. Very cool. And uh, we're open to the public on the weekends and during the week by appointment. And samples are free. And, uh, if you come here, you'll at least leave with a buzz. That's awesome. And hopefully a couple of good stories too. Well, dude, so thank you so much. This is really great. I really appreciate everything. Thank you, Mark. We had a blast today at Bayou Terrebonne Distillers. I mean, I love whiskey, but getting up close and seeing the actual process is something else. I've been to globally recognized distilleries and seen some amazing indie whiskey distilleries, but I have to say this one is really special. You can feel the passion that Noah has for this business and that's the kind of mindset that drives success. This place is great. I mean, between being an amazing space for private events, having their own comedy shows, selling these awesome personalized barrels, it's just a truly unique business and a lot of thought and passion have gone into it. Then again, I mean, who knows? Maybe it really is Grandma Lily's spirit that makes this place and its product something special. There's definitely something going on giving this place some magic.